Welcome, welcome to Shadow Me Tarot, where we will be reading the book for the most popular tarot deck on Amazon. This is the Modern Witch Tarot by Lisa Ster uh, Sterl, S-T-E-R-L-E, -E, and I'm so sorry if I said that incorrectly, um, but in any case, um, this is a beautiful deck. Um, I have seen a lot of um, readers using this. Um, it is the most popular, and so I want to make sure everybody gets an opportunity to learn their deck. Maybe it'll be like on the road or however, but we're going to do the whole unboxing here. I just got this today. Let's see how what we have. Oh, let's read the back here. It says, um... Modern Witch Tarot is a magical take on traditional tarot symbolism inspired by fashion and modern witches from every walk of life. Spark your imagination, seek your inner wisdom, and discover your true power. And, uh, yeah. I might have to fix something with the lighting here. The lighting is not quite right for my eyes. So, I don't know what to see details. Alright. Right off the bat, Box seems pretty good, like in the box. I mean, anytime two boxes like this, there's so many like loose decks that you get, like from this lady here. Um, I don't know, Maruk or whatever from Etsy. Etsy, she's got like hundreds of decks and no boxes. So I do like the dual purpose of this. This is something. Ooh, okay, here we go. I won't keep that. Um. Or this little tag thing on here. Okay, she's already super pretty. I like her. Okay. Um, and here is the guidebook. Oh my gosh, like super simple. Okay, so what I was trying to say was I'll probably keep this deck in here, like on my shelf, like like that or like this, so I can easily get to it. And then I can repurpose this side of the box for something else, which is super nice and. I don't know, great for somebody who uses their decks all the time. All right, that being said, um, let's go ahead and I'll put that there for now. And we'll take a look at this book and maybe I can zoom in a little bit. It's a hardcover book. It is super small and cute. And let's go ahead and zoom in. Okay, so this looks like at least the nice side just for video. Um, the spreads look like they're at the back here. I always like to read those first or take a look at them, particularly if you're just looking for the flow through. Um, you'll probably have to go through like double time and kind of skip through that way. But this deck has been out for a while, so hopefully most of you are here to learn your deck. Um, it just goes in the back here when you go to spreads, one card spread. Um, four card spread, past, present, future advice. Positive, negative, result, advice. And then they have the inner wheel, which is new <laughs> for me. Um, number one here, um, let's see. Number one starts in the center here, and then it goes two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, like a clock, sort of. Um, number one is the questioner, or you. Um, you will... Um, what are you ready to let go of for your life is number two. Three is in bulk. Where is your energy best dedicated? Four, Ostara. How do you find balance in your process of change? Uh, five is Beltane. What is the fire that drives your expansion? Sorry, I was trying to read that on the camera and I can't. <laughs> Litha, the turning point, divine inspirations. Uh, inspiration, sorry. Uh, llamas, I guess. Llamas. <laughs> uh, what do you need to begin? Harvesting, literally or metaphorically. Mabone, how will you change feedback into those around you? And Samhan, uh, this is the last one, nine. Guidance from your ancestors. If you're performing this reading on the day of Samhan, uh, draw one for your maternal line, one for your paternal line, and one for the mighty dead, those who achieved much but have now passed on. And then it just has, ooh, there's an extra card 
It's the Everything is Fine card can be used to replace the Ten of Swords. A version of this card with the tagline was the first I drew for the deck. Ooh, this feels like very much a healing deck, right? When you when when I read that, like that just feels like this is right, a shift in your perspective. And I really use tarot for that myself. Um, shifting my perspective and trying to see, you know, my life in a positive way instead of like maybe the way I'm feeling it. Um, okay, super thick deck. Okay. This is like just your basic writer weight, right, on this side. Um, and that is a like double the size. Um, so, all right. So we've got thicker cards for sure. Ooh, those are kind of nice and thick. Um, ooh, they kind of have, these are nice. This is almost like a you know, Oracle cards, they make them thicker like this because they're usually like 44 cards or, you know, less than this. <laughs> so, um, these feel nice. I am not going to lie. These feel nice. Um, all right. So transformation deck. Um, let's go ahead and dig in here. Oh, where's my fool? Hold on guys. All right, so now that I'm looking at the size of this book, which is like 56 pages, um, I'm going to go with that every word is important. So I'm going to read the foreword from um, Vida Ayala. Is she the one who wrote this? No, Lisa Sterl is the one who wrote it. Sorry, guys. Okay, here we go. The foreword. The universe has always been a large, mysterious place. Whether water, bones, or tarot, throughout history, humans have used various forms of divination to attempt to understand the world around them. Witches, like divination, can be found across all cultures. They are holders of wisdom and paranormal power, and tarot is often associated with them. In centuries past, these powerful femme people were revered and sought for their knowledge about both the natural and supernatural. They were the healers and respected council of commoners and royals alike. Modern witchcraft has in many ways become a refuge for the disenfranchised. Tarot is a way of, to explore oneself as much as the world. For many people of color, LGBTQ+, plus, people and femme folk, folks, it can be a way of retaking power. It can be a way of connecting with a part of themselves that they didn't even know they were cut off from and of seeking answers to questions they were previously afraid to ask. Lisa Sterl is both an amazing artist and an amazingly kind, insightful person. Through her work, she has helped hundreds of people to connect to the magical space that is made of imagination and insight. What you are holding in your hands is a beautiful example of love and respect for tarot. Here you will find yourself and those you love all represented as the complex, powerful beings that you are. Young, middle-aged, oops, oh, sorry, young, middle-aged, old, femme, androgynous, masculine, black, brown, white. You'll find artists, scholars, and fighters, warnings, and celebrations, and most importantly, enlightenment. This set is perfect for those who are well-practiced in the art of reading tarot or those that are seeking wisdom of the cards for the first time. Take a deep breath, close your eyes, visualize that which you seek. The answers are waiting for you. Blessed be Vida Ayala. Okay. Introduction. It all started with the Ten of Swords. I was a few years into a dead-end design job that was slowly draining my creativity, my passion for art, and my general faith in humanity. On one particularly terrible day, I was feeling my absolute lowest, doubting myself and the path I'd taken. I didn't know how to escape my situation, and all options seemed equally terrifying and awful. Through luck or fate, I was somehow reminded of the ten, so ten of swords. I flipped through my deck, and there I was staring at this card and feeling it in my bones. I made the very first illustration of the modern witch tarot deck that day. When everything is fine was the thing I'd been telling myself for a long time. My self-esteem and uh, my self-esteem and perceived artistic worth was an absolute bottom when I drew that illustration. 
Then, unbelievably, the image resonated with people. It resonated with a lot of people, more than any other piece of art I'd ever made. I realized then that through my pain and misery, I had finally arrived somewhere on the other side. My wish is that you can turn to this deck for answers or for guidance. When you're feeling absolutely awful or full of love and joy, I hope that these cards can be a tool for you to work through pain or to grow to understand your choices or solidify some spark of inspiration. I hope that you too can find the path you need to take. <clears throat> and I love that she uses um, the strength card. I mean, that's clearly a strength card. Um, image there um, to kind of like kind of sum that up so that's from the author or author all right the major arcana the major arcana also known as trumps are a collection of 22 potent archetypes that represent forces beyond the everyday their progression can be seen as a path of enlightenment known as the fool's journey the fool card zero with all its potential and freedom sits both outside the other trumps and within them all as it travels from the magician to the world, it develops spiritually, but like all worthwhile journeys, this one bears many challenges, for how else will she grow? In a reading, a trump may show forces outside the querent's control, a situation of high significance, or the influence of the divine. Elementally, the major arcana are the realm of spirit. The Fool the grand adventure begins. The fearless fool with her devil may care attitude is ready to take the first steps towards the unknown. Pure passion and optimism fuel her as she dances to her music, to joy itself. She doesn't know what lies beyond the cliff's edge, but she's be left behind her life in the city. Goodbye to normalcy, to routine, to the structured life she had Within society, she fully trusts her instincts to carry her beyond the ordinary. Don't be afraid to take that leap of faith. Now is the time for you to start your journey because you're ready. Be spontaneous and let your wildness run free. Don't look back in fear. Look ahead and up to the sky and the sun and let your instincts guide you. You've got this. So, the fool, some of the differences, right? Um, I mean, they've kept the shape of this. They kept the shape of the sleeves. They kept um, the shape of the hands. They do not have her holding the flower, which I kind of like because it signifies going after a life partner rather than just going after your happy, right? After your life. Um, they've kept the dog. They've changed the color of the dog. Um, they, I don't know, everything about this looks very similar. I love that it's a she and not a he. Um, I love um, that she's got her music with her, like she's kind of following her own inner joy. I like that the sun is larger. I like that the mountains for the life journey um, is different, right? This represents the life journey, but here it's moving away all, from all f that she's known. That's how the, um, which is the same kind of thing. It's really like, um, but I like the way this is depicted here. Um, so I like the way that the artist, artist has depicted her kind of going off on her own and away from it everything she's ever known before so there you go and i always interpret the fool as like new beginnings all right the magician it's time to make some magic to turn dreams into reality the magician knows what she wants and knows what she'll need to make it happen standing confidently and boldly brandishing a wand towards the sky the magician channels magic and inspiration into herself and transforms it into creative energy laid out before her is all she needs on a crystalline pedestal. The sword, her smarts and wit, prepares her for the task ahead. Her cup is full and emotionally connects the magician to her goal. The pentacle is the life experience that taught her how the world works. The other one drives her forward into action. Bring those lofty dreams down to earth. Make them real. You know what you want and you have the magic within you to make it happen. Believe in yourself. You know that you're ready to start creating. Let that inspiration flow through you and use all your tools to make some stuff. Okay. So I love how um, she's got all of her tools kind of sitting on these rocks here. Um, they've kept kind of the blooms all around the magician. We've changed the sex um, of the of the magician here and she's a, a woman of color um 
we still got the uh, I'm not sure what this is it it's like a double-ended candle some sort of scepter pointed up to the sky but it's basically a symbol of as above so below we still have the finger kind of like pointed to the ground we've kept the red robes and the white robes um, which I think is pretty cool because um, there's a level of vulnerability for this that I didn't see before that I haven't seen before I do not see the snake here um, and the snake is something about like rebirth like um, the infinity of life kind of the same kind of thing as this you know infinite you know ideas kind of above her head there um, but it's like I don't know it feels like the soul's task like you know you have is what this kind of snake means to me. But anyways, so we lost the snake a little bit, but we've got rocks in here instead, instead of the wood table. So, um, and actually I wouldn't even say they're rocks. I would say that they're more crystalline. So I'd give this more of an earthy thing, even though wood, I guess maybe I would think more fire, but that's just a me thing. Um, and the magician is just kind of, yeah, manifesting the next thing, um, that you, that you want, um, what you think about, you bring about. Um, and sometimes even if you just try, it brings her out the real thing to your life. So I have my own story of that, but I'll say in my van life, hopefully a series that comes out soon. <laughs> All right, now we have the High Priestess. There are deep secrets and many mysteries in life. The High Priestess knows the path toward them. She sits in her th on her throne with her laptop full of secret knowledge and wisdom, pensive but inviting. Behind her, a veil of pomegranate suggests the desire for answers is there. But we must not be ready to lift this veil of mysteries. The moon at her feet seeks to awaken our unconscious and open us up to hidden things and the strangest parts of existing. Be still. Sometimes the greatest power comes in knowing that you do not know anything. You've come up against the truth that more self-knowledge is needed and it's time to reflect in order to grow. Explore your subconscious through meditation, through tarot itself, through study. It's not time to make big decisions right now. Um, so just kind of the one word um, for the uh, definition for the high priestess for me is intuition um and then when you kind of like pair it with the the star it is kind of like your hopes your dreams your shadow self the things we don't see about our stuff what you'd think of in a night sky right um what we, you would think of a partial moon um so you can see that they've kept the moon um crown above her head here it's just in a headband um they've kept the uh the black and the the white which is kind of like the yin and the yang or the divine masculine and the divine fem feminine um we've changed the colors to more of a violet and i i do kind of like this um better because i do feel like i see this color um uh, maybe a little bit lighter close like in between the two the pink and this um when i do my meditations my chakra meditations at the crown of my head when i am like in the ether I guess um, or what feels like I guess what I would call the Akashic I see this color <laughs> so where this blue color I think more of throat chakra so I like that about this um, about, about this card I almost feel like it almost pulls more of my intuition um, and she's doing work here right um, here we've got the Torah in her hand here. She's actually doing, um, work. And I want to say, you know, like the work of self <laughs> uncovering those shadow sides, um, which might be represented by these, um, black boots here. Right. Um, and perhaps even the pillar, but in any case, moving on, we have the Empress. Isn't she gorgeous? Um, I'm seeing lots of crystals in this, um, in this deck so far. I mean, we're only into the fourth card here, but... Um, I like her dress. It's way more fashionable. She is a queen. Doesn't she looks like such a queen? Um, her crown is made of gold instead of flowers. I kind of feel like gold is kind of like, it's so rare, right? Just like the purity of our souls, like just like our souls, just a little bit of that piece of who we are. I feel like, um, I don't know, the solid gold part of who we are. <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's lots of similarities. We've kept the pillows, we've kept the red, um, the red chair kind of, or like the fabric here. We've kept that, that red color. 
Um, we've changed up the pillow here. This one looks way more comfy. <laughs> the tree is a little bit different. We've moved to a, um, a, an orange sky, which reminds me more of um, in an orange heart, which really kind of conveys like the sexiness of the Empress and the meaning of the Empress, um, particularly when we're tapping into... Um, well, the divine feminine really feels like um, being rooted in that divine feminine um, and the sacral, the oranges, the sacral chakra having that kind of like sexiness of, of womanhood. Um, all right, moving on. Oh, sorry. Love is everything. The Empress is feeling herself. This benevolent goddess is alive and truly connected to the world and others through passion and pure emotions. The Empress is empowered by her love and sexuality, and her energy flows through everything around her. She gives life to the lush vegetation and receives life from the powerful river. She welcomes pleasure and feelings and fills each moment with ecstasy. Think less, feel more, embrace self-love, and use that self-love to build stronger and more profound connections with family, friends, or lovers. Be fulfilled by your social circles of those who who love you. Drink from the cup of love. Allow it to nourish and warm you. Through love, you can find deep meaning and fulfillment. Love, love, love. It's all here for you if you let it in. So the one word definition for Empress for me is uh, creation. Um, right? We are, as women, we create, we bring people into the world so it's bringing ideas into the world um, and nurturing kind of those ideas or ideas people you know things businesses um, I don't know whatever you're manifesting is usually you know this is the that's the creative set this is kind of laying your solid foundation this is like the father figure if this is the mother the empress is the mother then this is the father figure he is the king of kings he is the sexy masculine right um and here we have, I want to say, an androgynous person. Um, and they've got the city kind of in the background with the with the um, life scepter here. It's a little bit different. Um, they've removed the Aries from the chair and put the horns on the crown. Um, but I always think of Aries as I am. So there's a part of um, the emperor that I think of I am the foundation um, so I definitely think of root chakra, which they've maintained in the red suit here. Um, I like that um, they use kind of like, it's almost like a teal color chair because I feel like he cannot just, he's, and it's, and it's so square, um, you know, it's less ornate than in here that I just feel like he's got his emotions and his speech kind of in check. Like <clears throat> he is the ultimate in self-control. Um, I suppose. Um, so yeah, this is a very interesting emperor here. Um, but yeah, the teal color kind of reminds me of like heart and throat both at the same time. Boundaries and structure make us feel safe. The emperor is full of authority and creates a world full of rules and laws. She, it's a she, um, in this one, she is a comforting answer to the chaos of the natural world, but she is rigid and uncompromising on her stony throne she requires logic and reason above all else and she is unafraid to lead and take the reins to shape the world around her though she lords over a powerful and grand cityscape the river of life has slowed to a trickle behind her protect yourself if you need to don't allow others to walk all over you and don't be afraid to stand up take charge and force change Logic and reason may be the best approach for a particular problem, and by creating some stability in your life, you may be able to release some anxiety. Don't lose touch with your compassion, though. Stubbornness and stoicism will not always be the best answer. So my one-word definition for emperor is foundation. And hopefully I remember to say each of my one-word definitions for each of the cards as we go through. Uh, the Hierophant, faith. Um, that's my one word definition. Okay. As students, we learn from the past and from others. It is the Hierophant that calls us to unlock our psyche and hidden potential through diligent study. She is wise in her guidance, help, helping us 
discover new things we could not have found alone. As students and disciples, we kneel at her feet, listening to her stories and lessons. And if we do so, we may be able to find the lock that fits the keys crossed at her feet. Look to the past, read books, find a community of both differing worldviews and familiar ones. Find the passion within you and the hunger to know more. Nothing is created in a void. And you can enrich yourself by finding communities or collectives that help to structure your study. Learning new things can open your mind to new pathways and possibilities. Um, so this can also just mean like institutions like corporations or churches or, um, I don't know, colleges, stuff like that. Um, but it's usually, and I say faith is a one word thing because, um, we have faith in our institutions. <laughs> um, but I do like the other side of faith in the sense that we give service. Um, so that kind of incorporates that community as well. Anyways. Um, the lover's card is like, my one word is, um, love. <laughs> oh, I love all the colors in this one. Honestly, I love it. There's an overall like purplish hue to this. Um, I love that she's using the cityscape in the background. She's using more stone, which feels more grounded. Um, we see the back of our, um, uh, of our lovers, um, making them non-gender specific, which is cool. Um, we've kept the, the burning bush or the burning tree and we've kept the, um, tree with the snake and the fruit. Um, our angel's head is turned to the side. Um, the wings are still red. The cloak is still, um, gray. But the person is purple. Um, and maybe that's just um, an expression of, you know, the universe or God on your side. Angels on your side. All right, the lovers. Through love, we can reach new heights. The lover's card is full of beauty, stars, wishes, hopes, and dreams. Two hearts, minds, and bodies become one. The lovers create a holy, unique, and special place, a paradise of mutual respect and adoration. All protective walls are torn down, leaving us naked and perfectly ourselves. Together, we see beautiful dreams through our unclouded eyes. We do things we never thought we could. We make each other stronger through trust. The world sings and nothing is impossible. You're feeling lucky in love, drunk in love, maybe a little crazy in love. There's a chance that these new feelings come with a choice to make, to make so embrace your desires and trust your heart. The lovers represent all kinds of love, especially that person in your life who makes you feel like you could climb mountains. You know who they are. Treasure your time with them. Walk on air and wish on shooting stars. Let your days and nights be filled with love. Um, so in addition to love, um, my one word um, interpretation for this card is also commitment because we can be, we can love things that we do and be completely committed to like me unboxing these cards and reading them to you. <laughs> I'm committed to doing all of it. It'll probably take like three hours, but I love it. I love it. I really, really do. All right. So now we move on to the chariot. I love that we have, um, <clears throat> we kept the cats, but they're flying now. Um, and they're like sphinxes. Um, and I want to say they're more feminine in nature. Um, let's see what else. The tails are not wrapped underneath them, but are kind of laxadaisily in, you know, wrapped around in a comfortable way. Um, I like that she's wielding a wand because it's like she is like, I am on, I'm manifesting and doing like doing the work of the manifesting, right? Um, so she's moving um, and she's using a motorcycle. So even at a fast pace is what I would say. And we have a feminine energy instead of a masculine energy. I like that they've kept the moons here for um, like that was kind of like his 
shoulder pads here or shoulder armor. Um, and here she's kind of got faith on her sleeves. Um, it's kind of how I look at or interpret that a little bit more. <laughs> See that a little bit more um, in this image and relate to a little bit more than perhaps this one. Lots of blues in here. Um, you know, for me, that's um, always throat chakra. Um, and then the yellow always means kind of like my soul. So I really feel my soul moving forward quickly towards my dreams um, when I'm kind of like looking at this card and in style with like, you know, the universe on my side. <laughs> um, all right. So, uh, yeah, there's the chariot. She rules everything around her. The chariot rides in on a silver gleaming motorcycle ready for battle. She's got her leather armor to protect her. Her crown points toward the sky and she connect, she's connected to nature, to her emotions and to the stable ground beneath her. The chariot has worked hard to balance everything in her life perfectly. Everything is in the right place and under her control. Victory might not be easy, but she'll win in the end. It's time to be a boss and get shit done, metaphorically or literally. Put on your most badass leather jacket and toughest boots and get ready to fight. Fight for yourself. Don't give up. Don't let anyone run you off the road. It's probably going to take a bit of force and mental energy, but you're confident. You're powerful. You've prepared for this. Victory is yours. All right. Next is the strength card. And she's gorgeous. I like that they kept the flowers, but I like the, the roses, I think, almost better. Um, we've got more mountainous, kind of like crystal kind of shapes back here, um, more so. We're still using the green because it's like um, <clears throat> that inner strength is protected, like her heart is protected by her soul, you know? Um, it's kind of how I'm feeling when I'm interpreting the colors. Um, cause the yellow, I always kind of think of solar plexus chakra or soul. Um, this lion is very tame, right? She's definitely, um, tamed her, her beast, her inner beast. Um, and, and the lion is, is very loyal, which I feel is, um, a very, um, Leo of this card. <laughs> Uh, all right, so difficult problems require strength and willpower. Strength can tame a lion, face down her fears and unwanted feelings, bringing them under control through grace and acceptance. Only by reconciling with those scary aspects of ourselves can strength grow and discover true inner calm. Flowers create link between strength and the lion, and this connection can be severed. These inner passions, these emotions that feel like they're spiraling out of control and consuming us need to be accepted peacefully or they'll end up controlling us. It will take courage to approach these possibly frightening aspects of yourself. It will also take compassion and tenderness as only then can you find the inner strength and power to make yourself whole. You have to accept your fears, your anxieties, and your feelings because they are part of you. You can't cut them off. You may find yourself dealing with a difficult problem, but it can be dealt with through grace, maturity, and strength. The Hermit. Through solitude, we can discover new things about ourselves. The Hermit has shrugged off material and superficial concerns. Okay, guys, I'm so sorry. I just realized, like, I don't feel like I did it for the chariot either. But this is just movement forward or movement for chariot for me. And the strength card is inner strength. And now we get to the hermit, and that's kind of like solitude going within. Um, neither good nor bad, just solitude, right? That self-reflection. Um, through solitude, we can discover new things about ourselves. The hermit has shrugged off material and superficial concerns and distractions and has retreated to, inner, to an inner sanctum. She's taken a break from the outside world to focus on herself. The glowing star is guiding light of her unconscious mind and a pathway to a breakthrough. The laptop is the support of her learned wisdom and knowledge to help her along her journey. It can also be a special skill that helps the hermit cope with being alone. It it's okay to be alone. Silence and meditation can help you explore your own inner world and lead you to new places. There's so many constant distractions that can keep you from focusing on your own self-care. From social media to job stresses to 
fear of missing out, it's time to take a break from it all, to retreat to a place that makes you feel safe with the goal of improving yourself. Don't ignore your own mental well-being. And if you need to, a teacher, a guide, or a therapist to help you along the way, that's okay. Don't be afraid of being alone. All right, so differences. We've got color differences for sure. Um, I like that they've got the star near her solar plexus. To me, it is about kind of discovering your own inner light and how how bright it can shine, right? And doing the work, um, doing the research, finding out kind of like, I don't know, maybe there's a sense of like, what's wrong with me <laughs> when you're doing this kind of research? But it's really not what's wrong with you. It's how can I discover more of me? Um, what, what, you know, is similar to other people and, you know, how do they navigate life when they do this thing, this kind of thing too? Anyway, there we are for the hermit. Um, but we kept the colors. We've got the gray for the cloak. Um, she's barefoot. She's indoors. She's not outdoors. Um, she doesn't have a lantern. She's just kind of going by her own inner light. So, um, the, the color of the dresser gives me kind of like seeking out her soul because we're um, in the same way that the yellow is here. You're kind of seeking towards or looking towards your your soul shine, I guess. Um, and I just say that from the color, the gold color. All right, moving on to the Wheel of Fortune, our destiny. What goes up must come down. Divine timing. So many different um, keywords for this one. Not, life never stops moving forward. This golden wheel of fortune is all of life. With its many cycles of ups and downs, we see the alchemy of the entire world through the symbols of Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius, and Taurus, each representing fire, water, air, and earth. There is mystery and the unknowable in the letters on the wheel, as we don't always know why things happen the way they do, but the cycle is what is is what it is, whether we're at the radiant top or the abysmal bottom. Shit happens, or it, it can feel like it doesn't make sense. It's unfair, or perhaps you're at the top and you just can't believe your good luck. And sometimes that's all it is, pure dumb luck. It's your task to understand that when goodness comes, badness will inevitably follow and vice versa. Just write it out. Nothing lasts forever, the good or the bad. So appreciate everything. Okay, so I like that they used the actual symbols for each. Um, because this does... Um, <laughs> <laughs> they've got this here as Aquarius and I've always thought of um, this as Virgo um, I've you know like the maiden I always kind of but I guess it's Aquarius and I always thought I'm sorry I must have been doing it wrong all this time um, but I like that they've kind of got these symbols on here a little bit better um, a little easier to read than the older um, writer weight version so that's helpful and uh Yeah, I mean, they've kept, you know, a lot of the, the similar symbology for the, the Wheel of Fortune there. All right, moving on to the Justice card. I interpret this in two ways. Karmic. <laughs> That's one, like a karmic lesson. And the other one is head over heart, the balancing of the head and the heart. Okay, <clears throat> Justice. The choices we make shape who we are. Justice, contemplative in her bright red robe-like coat, holds high the sword of choice. She does not treat her task lightly, and the balance scales indicate that she is weighing all the options before her. Justice seeks to uncover deep understanding of moral and ethical truths. At once she's found the right path, she's ready to take action and use that sword. You have to take responsibility for every choice you make. If you drift through life without examining your choices, and what they say about you and your values, you'll never be truly self-aware. And you may find yourself treating others with dishonesty and unfairness. There may be a difficult issue that you need to examine or a social responsibility you've been neglecting. It's time to stand up. It's time to do the right thing. Okay. She's wearing sneakers. Don't know why that's cool. <laughs> but I'm like, maybe justice walks out sometimes. I don't know. Um, I like that she's wearing sneakers and pants um, and, a, and a big old coat. Um, 
I like that it's a regular person so that we as individuals get to decide rather than like an actual like judge. Um, I like that the this feels like very much so more so than I've ever associated before the Ace of Swords, right? Um, for, for those of you who read tarot. Um, so I feel like she's cutting to the core of her truth right here. And then again, like balancing head and heart. But I, the, I like that they, um, you know, they've kind of kept these pillars here, which kind of feels like, you know, your foundational core, core belief system. So interesting, very, very interesting. Oh, I already did my one word. All right, now we've got the hanged one or the hanged man. Um, definitely some similarities. We're still on a tree here. This, this one looks like it's actually growing, a growing tree. This one looks like it was like, you know, built. <clears throat> um, we've kept the, this is a Freemason symbol. Um, it's like the compass, I think, something to do with like the compass. Um, anyways, this leg thing means something in Freemasonry. Um, we've got the same kind of a blue tunic here. We've got the same red pants. We've got tennis shoes again. Um, my one word definition for the hanged man or the hanged one is just surrender or shift in perspective. Okay. And the hanged one, true peace can only come from within. The hanged one has found this inner Zen in what seems like an unusual place. She hangs from the tree of life in a comfy sweater and equally comfy sweatpants. Maybe she seems a little odd, hanging upside down and perfectly poised, but she's also calm. The hanged one is just simply released, or excuse me, is simply relaxed and at peace. Finally, it's the calm after the storm. You might have just you might have just had some tough battles or obstacles to conquer, but now it's time to relax a bit. Meditate, slow down, nurture your body and soul. You might have to sacrifice something in order to reach the state of Zen, but don't worry, there's no right or wrong way to do it. It may even feel like your self-care routine is a little strange to others, but this process is crucial for you to embrace who you are and to free yourself of others' expectations and demands. The Death Card. Um, virtually the same scene. Um, the difference is, is that we've got a mother over her children um, with the king um, dead kind of like behind over here. Um, and actually, I don't even say it's a king. I want to say it's actually a young prince because um, it seems like a younger, a younger man in a suit um, with the crown kind of knocked off. And then we've got small children um, here. There is a child here offering a flower um, where I've never really noticed that before but it does look like there is a flower in that hand um, so the age is different for this um, the positioning of these two characters here is the same this is different but there is kind of like prayer hands um, and we've got the uh, the two buildings back here, which is kind of the scene from the moon um, with the sun um, coming up behind it. Um, a little bit different flower here. It's more of like a hibiscus kind of flower is what it looks like to me. And the death card to me is always um, meant transformation. Um, what I find interesting is this little ship in the background. Oh, there's a ship back here too. Hmm. So maybe a shift in the wind is how I might interpret this card <laughs> a little more so than, than something else. I would say more of a shift in the wind rather than a full-on transformation um, from like winter to spring or something like that. My one word definition for the death card is transformation. Death comes for us all. She comes on a pale horse dressed in black leather, a skull bandana hinting at our inevitable end. Death is light and dark, truly and deeply a part of life. The queen tries to fight it and fails. The old woman is wise and ready to greet it without fear. The young woman can't even bear to think about it at all and turns away pretending it's not there. The little girl is bright-eyed and innocent. She doesn't even understand why she would be afraid. Death is eternal, inescapable, and necessary. 
You don't have to let death control your life. Death is the moment of letting go. Maybe there is a memory that haunts you or a thing you desperately want to believe about yourself and will into existence. If you can let it die, you'll finally be able to change into something better and new. Rebirth can follow uh, tough changes. All right. The next card, temperance. Um, the best one word definition is balance. And the very first word is balance is a beautiful thing. Temperance is a radiant angel decked out in rainbows, balancing one foot on land and the other in water. She is confidently, she as she confidently pours water from cup to cup, sunflowers are bursting behind her and the sun is bright and full of joy. Temperance is the perfect alchemist and she's full of song as she blends things together in harmony. Your life is off kilter and you need to create some balance. Maybe you were burnt out from working too much or you've been binge watching TV all weekend and now your house is a mess. So it's now time to put your house in order and start doing things in moderation. You'll find that if you work to balance all the different aspects of your life, everything feels so much easier. Try and face this task with optimism and positivity and enjoy all the wonderful things in your life equally. So some of the obvious changes between the two are the sunflowers versus the lilies. Um, the uh, we have a female uh, of color, a person of color, um, who is the angel here, um, and I think this one typically represents Michael, the angel Michael. Um, so maybe Michelle. <laughs> um, I don't think angels have a sex. Um, but we've got one foot in, I mean, the, the positioning of the feet is the same. Um, the color of the, the card is a little bit different. And I, there is a psychology behind using certain colors, right? And because they're, um, the colors are like slightly off, like this one's got more blue in it. Um, this one's got more green than, than kind of yellow in it. I just feel like speaking with love, I guess, um, you know, kind of balancing, bringing things into balance, like with your heart and your speech kind of, um, with the blue colors in there and then, um, rooted in your core values, right? Um, with the rainbow, I kind of feel like just appreciating all parts of yourself. Um, beautiful. Balance. Balance is the one word definition for temperance. Then we have the devil. Oh, we've got these genders turned around again so we can show these on YouTube. Apparently this is a bad thing. <laughs> showing showing the devil card on YouTube is like they're they get mad about it, but I don't put mine up here for kids. Um ooh, he's got claws he's got hooves here and claws here. Um, he's got more of an Aries kind of like goat kind of head. Um, we've got the bat wings still. He's got a red sash and um, a more slender body, I have to say. Um, I'm like, this one's, he looks more centaur in his legs here. So they're still chained. They still have, you know, kind of the addiction. We've got fire on both sides instead of berries on this side and fire on this side. Um, let's see. He's still holding a torch. His hand is kind of roughly in the same Spock kind of thing that he does here. Yeah. All right. And me, my one word um, for this one is like addiction. Or just something that has a hold on you. Addiction is a good one. <laughs> Unhealthy habits <laughs> um, and desires can consume and control us. The devil has tempted and captured us with their false promises of wealth, power, and pleasure. The upside down pentacle symbol symbol of 
dark magic adorns their forehead they raise one hand in an assurance of knowledge and the other hand holds a torch pointing at the earth and all physical things we are blind to our chains the devil has so skillfully misled us into their intoxicating realm money sex power status pleasure you've become obsessed with the superficial and fleeting desires and it's led you down an unhealthy path you might feel guilt and shame as you let these impulses control you and you might hurt yourself or those around you through your selfishness face the hard truth take the steps necessary to break your change and seek help if you need to all right now we have the tower um which is kind of like surprise um they kept all the elements except for this person is literally stabbed on a crystal here or on the rocky base everything is very pointed and crystally um for me so i feel like this is very much grounded pentacle kind of earthy deck um but yeah one of the things i was thinking <laughs> it's like surprise it's raining fire <laughs> Because it is, and it's doing it in both pictures here, too. I just kind of, um, why does this one feel so much more catastrophic? And it just, um, it just does. It just feels more catastrophic. Um, but yeah, I always think of this as a surprise. Um, some people can <clears throat> say it's kind of like a tower moment can be like, this is a big moment where you this is the stuff and you know this is the place in life where you get to see what you're made of kind of like this is um this is a new choice this is a new direction what you thought was going to happen isn't happening so that's what <clears throat> the one word ant for this one for me is uh surprise but it says uh, i like mine better okay it's just so much nicer than absolute disaster has struck. <laughs> We've built and cared for the tower with its golden and bejeweled crown, and now we are thrown violently from it. Fire rains down, dark storm clouds gather ominously, and we are in absolute despair as the tower crumbles. There's nothing we can do as we watch its destruction, and the pain of the sharp rocks below is unavoidable. I'm like, I hope there's no pain there. I hope you're just dead. Like for me, just like I'm cool with just dead and I don't need a rock poking through me to feel none of that anyway sorry uh, sudden massive and probably painful change <laughs> is on the horizon the tower is undoubtedly one of the most violent cards but it doesn't have to be have to completely destroy you you might face the end of a relationship or a job bridges may burn or a friendship friendship may go up in flames but from the ashes a phoenix tragedy can help us grow stronger and really illuminate what's truly valuable to us feel your pain don't ignore it and you can learn from it pain is just another necessary element in living a life <clears throat> Isn't that the truth? So yeah, this is the pain of life. Um, karmic lesson. Actually, this is the pain of life. I think that's a good one. Um, absolute destruction. Like, eh. mm. okay. We've got the star card here. We've got um, the bird from here is flying over here. Um, and the bird is way far back in this tree where it feels like it's much closer here. Um, we do have the same number of stars, but they've been kind of like mirrored, right? Yeah, we've got the three. They're just mirrored um, in terms of just the stars. Um, what other differences? We've got red jugs. Um, I like red. It always thinks, makes me think of like kind of grounding. She's got one foot um, on the earth and one, th uh, one foot... Um, in the water which kind of makes me feel like you're equally balanced and I guess um, your intuition and, and what you're what's what you're manifesting in your world um, a lot of people look at this as being famous or being acknowledged um, or an acknowledgement of some sort um, I my one word um, my one word definition for this one is hope okay so darkness is turned into light the star is peaceful and content in her nudity she's been born anew and became stronger from her trials she is free and unburdened not trying to balance or control anything but is happily pouring her cups full of life energy 
and love out into the world. The ibis symbol of creativity and, and inspiration flies high in the sky above her and the stars shine brightly for her. Despair has turned to hope. Your wounds are healing. Your scars are fading. So bask in this time of peace and serenity. You don't have to do anything if you don't want to. Let yourself be free and accept these calm moments. The earth and everyone around you will rejuvenate you, comfort you, and fill you with joy. You are a shining beacon of possibility. So dream big and wish on that shooting star. All right. <clears throat> Now we move on to the moon. Um, this I always think of my shadow self. This is the stuff I got to look at within um, or my own darkness within. And um, I am very offended being like I am a Scorpio. I always identify this as a Scorpio, even though I know it's a crab ish thing. I don't know. It's a lobster. <laughs> it's not a scorpion. It's a lobster. Um, but in any case, um, there is some darkness lurking in this water. Like, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> some serious shadow self coming out into the light um and this is like what i like here is these are the masks that they're hiding behind i um i like that we're using people instead of um dogs howling at the moon it just really gives us a different meaning um how you know our dark side is kind of like l lurking behind the mask that we present to the world so um very very cool um my, yeah, my one word is really just kind of like, maybe like self-doubt, but it, there's so much in this one with like intuition. It's very tied to um, the high priestess and the star card both. Um, so it's like, I almost feel like, I don't know, it's like, it's the dark side. <laughs> it's your dark side. Um... illusion what we can't see all right so here it says the full moon brings out the weirdos two nude women with wild hair and animal masks dance under the moon's strange light they dance and howl in the moonlight and release their wild untamed energy the moon brings out strange things from the dark a glimpse of what lies beyond the ordinary a creature lurks in the pool of water behind them a reminder of the ancient fears of the unknown. Wake up your wild side. Imagination and the realm of mind can allow you to see things in a new way. Yep. You might be feeling restless, kind of weird and full of wild energy. So be spontaneous. Do something crazy. Trust your instincts. It'll lead you to new and possibly strange places. But be aware that by waking up your wild side, you may wander into some dangerous places as well. You may wander into, oh, sorry. So be alert and listen <laughs> to when your gut tells you you've traveled too far into the unknown. And you know what? This is incredibly tiny reading, um, tiny letters. So I apologize for stumbling, but at the same token, I'm like, I need a magnifying glass. <laughs> All right, I had to pause the video. I don't remember if I did the second half of the moon. I know I did the first part. So we're going to read the second half again, and you can fast forward if I already did it. Sorry. Um, it says, wake up your wild side imagination, and the realm of the mind can allow you to see things in a new way. You might be feeling restless, kind of weird, and full of wild energy, so be spontaneous. Do something crazy. Trust your instincts. It'll lead you to new and possibly strange places. But be aware that by waking up your wild side, you may wander into some dangerous places as well. So be alert and listen to when your gut tells you you've traveled too far into the unknown. Ooh, I like unknown as a good one word um, definition for this card as well. All right, the sun. This is a very much a happy inner child card for me. Um, It's always happy. <laughs> it's like... I don't know, a happy surprise, like, I don't know, just happy. Um, with sunshine comes new life, an innocent child full of carefree and joy, of carefree joy and happiness waves a red banner high in the sky. Behind her, a gray wall is her past, and the flowers of memories bloom and thrive in the sun. There is wonder and warmth everywhere. The sun has turned the day into a promising playground ready for exploration. 
It's a time to feel totally alive. Winter is over. The world is lush and full of excitement and beauty. Bask in the sunlight. Embrace life. You might have just stumbled upon a big discovery or revelation that is astonishing, amazing, and helps you see things in a new and beautiful way. This new perspective is the result of your hard inner and outer work, and now it is time for the reward. So treat yourself. Do something fun. Have an adventure. The day, the days are yours to fill with, fill with childlike wonder and optimism. <clears throat> um, I like her face. Like I identify with that level of excitement and joy more so than this like naked child <laughs> with their arms swinging out. Um, I think that the the flag feels more real, realistic for the <laughs> for the size of the child, like here versus here, but then that just makes me feel like overjoyed um, in thinking that. So they did keep many many of the elements. Um, I want to say where here the sun might have more of a downturned um, mouth or neutral mouth. I feel like this one has a more upturned, um, more inviting kind of warm where this feels more like, I don't know, a god. <laughs> I don't know. Tell me what you think. Um, so yeah, they've kept a lot of it. And Sun for me is just happy. All right, then we've got judgment. I always interpret this one as awakening, um, <clears throat> like a spiritual awakening. At points in our lives, we can feel like there's something pulling us to change. Judgment calls down on down to us in the form of a benevolent angel and presents us with crossroads in her ba on her banner. As humans, we aren't alone in the world that's surrounded by others struggling each in their own way through compassion, love, and des a desire to be better people. We reach up towards this lofty goal of self-actualization to enrich the world and others around us. Only through responding to the call can we become truly alive. It's not about judging others, but judging yourself. There are times to be kind to yourself, and then there are times for some tough love. Now is one of those times. There's an important change needed for you to reach new heights, but, you are prepared, but you're prepared. Your past self is behind you, and the future calls. Examine yourself and your choices honestly. Is this best for you? I always love it when cards pose questions. I often think that questions sometimes are the best way to read your cards, at least particularly for yourself. Um, there's full books of questions and there's some great um, decks that have questions. I'll be doing the Fable, Fable Makers um, animated tarot set because the journaling questions in those to me are so profound. Um, it is an excellent deck. It's ridiculously expensive. So I'm going to share it with y'all. Um, the world. Um, this is complete. That's my one word definition for, for the world. The journey is over. Much like the fool at the very beginning, we end this adventure with a dance full of pure joy. The world dancer is perfectly fulfilled and has unified body and mind, conscious and unconscious, and all the elements in perfect harmony. She is centered, enlightened, and bursting with self-love. She is part of everything, and everything is part of her. The wreath circles her with a zero and infinities. She is both everything and nothing all at once and has become one with the world. Success. Your hard work has paid off. You've passed trials and overcome the obstacles. The journey might have been challenging. You might have had to fight and cry and feel all the feelings possible to get here, but you did it. Take the time to acknowledge what you've achieved and revel in your success and glory. You are full of magic and you are absolutely amazing. Okay, moving on to the Minor Arcana. This looks like it's much shorter um, for each of these. Um, which does make the minor arcana because they're not as significant, right? As the different, um, I don't know, there's like, this is significant parts of our journey, right? The memorable stuff. And this is more like the day-to-day -day stuff, right? Okay. So the minor arcana. If a witch knows the elements, then they know the minor arcana. 
The Minor Arcana are split into four suits, wands, cups, swords, and pentacles. They run from ace to ten, known as the pips, and are followed by the court cards, page, knight, queen, and king. Fifty-six cards seems like a lot to learn, but remember all the suits have their own theme, and each number or court card brings a certain aspect to the theme. So, if you understand one, ace, you'll hopefully remember the rest. <clears throat> Wands, fire, willpower, creativity, projects, and actions. Okay, so I just want to say, like, if any of you are very, very, very new to um, the tarot, this is the basically the 52 cards that we play um, cards with, you know, like Crazy Eights or, <laughs> or like Go Fish, you know, just like a regular deck of poker cards. And um, <clears throat> the only thing different is it has an extra card, the, pa the Page of Cups. Um, that they kind of combined into like a regular card deck um, <clears throat> as the jack. So in any case, um, kind of keep that in mind. Wands is um, clubs. Hearts is cups. Um, diamonds are pentacles and spades are swords. Um, so you can practice this on any card deck, kind of, sort of. Um, but we'll go ahead and go through these. Sorry. So <clears throat> wands, clubs, um, there's a million different names for these. Um, but wands, fire, willpower, creative, creativity, projects, and action. Cups oops, is water, inner experience, relationships, and imagination. Swords, air, thought, and the intellectual realm. And pentacles, earth, work, finances, nature, and the physical reality. And as you learn tarot, those understanding those four suits and what they kind of rule um, is super important um, in kind of like discovering the meanings of the cards and what they mean to you, right? So if I'm looking at this and I know that ace is a new beginning and I see that um, there's kind of like fire behind it, I know that it's a fiery kind of thing. I know it rules um, business, creativity, willpower, power, pro projects, right? So I can assume from the one um, that something new, like new project is kind of coming towards me or a new business or something new that I'm creating. Um, it's in the creative process. So <clears throat> anyways, in a reading, a pip, these cards, usually represents how events unfold in the querent's life, while court cards often represent an individual either the querent or someone else. So when we get to the kings and queens, that just means those are people in your life or archetypes, like kind of like characteristics of people around you or you yourself. All right, digging right into these definitions, the Ace of Wands. High above a desert landscape, baking in the sun and heat, your wand burns with passion. A fire has been lit within you, and there's no putting it out. Allow this burning drive within you to push you forward into new things. Harness that creativity. It's time to go. Start this wild journey. Okay, so this Ace of Wands is kind of like, I don't know, like what's my one word for this one is going to be new, um, new venture is what I would put for this one. But I'm also business oriented, so me, this automatically is a new venture. Could be a new project, could be anything. Um, creativity like Two of Wands. Um, to me, this planning is my one word for that one. Two of Wands, your commanding presence looking down on the world below you. The phone in your hand holds questions while you wonder what to do and where to go next. You've had success lately, but are a bit uncertain about your next step. Next steps. It's not time to rest, though. Don't get distracted and say, stay fixed on your goal. Um, this is also kind of like because it's a two, oftentimes you have a choice between one of two things. Um, you might be looking at which direction to go. So it's almost like the pre-planning phases. Like it's planning, but it's like, yeah, making the choice. Which choice do I make to set my, you know, my intention, my will towards? All right, moving on. Three of Wands. Oh, and we didn't compare these cards. I'm having to take my glasses on and off just because the print is so small and I'm getting older. Oh, we have a female in heels. <laughs> Heck yeah. Um, the shapes feel like they're the same in the distance. The water is bigger in the distance. The color, the use of blue is, um, is 
different. So I feel like there's more vocalization um, or communication in return in regards to this planning, which I feel is kind of like pertinent because I don't know. I mean, me as a female, I need to talk through things to kind of figure things out for myself. But in any case, um, yeah, um, I like the female being boss for sure. And I do like the use, um, the exchange to kind of feminine energy, um, and, and you know, it's very, I feel like it is a very inclusive deck. Um, you should have some men maybe in here. Um, all right. So this one is the three of wands. This is really kind of like waiting for the plans that you've set into motion to kind of give you more information back. So I feel like it's a waiting you're kind of patiently waiting as things are kind of moving forward. Um, three, three of wands, standing solidly on earth. You've got your wands for support and you're contemplating your plans. You're working hard and getting ready for the future. It's working. You've got a solid strategy. So all you have to do now is put it into action. <clears throat> so yeah, I guess if the two of wands for this deck is the planning stage, then the three of wands is um, putting those plans into action. I like that. They're setting the boats out there into the water. Um, I kind of like the use of water in this better, but that makes it more of a grounded and emotional day, I think, for me, considering that there's um, this is a fire card. I don't know. I'm just kind of looking at the cards and kind of internalizing the meanings for myself. This is always, um, oftentimes people say this is like a marriage card, but like if it's a marriage card, I kind of think of it as like a young marriage card, like people in their 20s. Um, otherwise, I really kind of think of this as a business venture getting its legs um, is kind of how I, I feel like the Four of Wands is. It's kind of like the first, um, just like the first pillars of a foundation um, that is, is growing. And here they have a city in the background where here they have a castle in the background. And it's almost like, yeah, you're building for your own little place in the world. Um, and this is the first pillars of that foundation. Okay, moving on. Four of Wands. The garden is growing luxuriously, and these two have wandered away from their stress and planning to have a little fun. It might be a surprise, but you'll, you've got some good times on the horizon. Take a break from your hard work and pull all your energy into treating yourself. Mm. Okay. I'm just going to move on there. Five of Wands. Um, I always look at this as conflict. Um, all kind of conflicts of some sort, right? This one is more of a competition conflict because they're using sticks and not swords. Um, their wands raised high. This girl gang is engaged in battle, ready to defend their position and fight one another. It could just be friendly competition or it could get ugly, but either way, it will be exhausting. Competition is fierce and the obstacles are many. Six of Wands. Victory. <laughs> At least in the short run, we've got victory here. Six of Wands. A V for victory. You've won a big battle and now you can enjoy the rewards. Your admiring supporters cheer you on in a victory parade. Since you've just accomplished something big, success is yours. Enjoy your moment and let your loot or and let your ego get that boost. <clears throat> Seven of Wands. To me, this has always been a leadership card. <laughs> um, you're in a position of strength, right? Most of the time, anybody vying for your position is be below you. Um, anyways. So in business, when I do business reading, this is um, a leadership um, card for me. And everybody does, reads slightly differently. Um, your fiery drive has given you the strength and willpower to climb to the top of the cliff, only to have others try to knock you back down. You've succeeded and you're feeling strong, but others may be jealous. They'll try to make you feel like 
feel like less and sow seeds of doubt in yourself. Don't let them. You deserve to be here. Fight for yourself. So it's almost like a reminder for self-confidence. Hmm, I like that. Um, all right. Eight of Wands. Messages coming quickly. Um, movement. This is a movement card and it's moving quickly um, is kind of how everybody interprets this card. Eight of Wands. You fly across the desert fast as hell looking to the horizon. The wand speeding along the sky above you. It's time to stop sitting around. You gotta take action and go, go, go. Rev the engine and stop wasting time because you've got things to do. People to see and places to go. All right. We've got the Nine of Wands. Um, I always said uh, this you know, a lot of people call this the wounded warrior. It is the wounded warrior. He's literally wounded. Um, like he's been in battle. She also has been wounded. Well, she's got like tapes on, um, like she's ready to box actually. Um, she just needs gloves, <laughs> but she does have the bandage on her head. But in any case, um, so yeah, to me, my one word definition for this is boundaries. Um, good or bad there. It's a boundary. Nine, nine of wands. Where are you? You've got your fighting gear ready your wands all stacked neatly in a wall of defense backing you up you're prepared for a good fight it's time to wrap those knuckles and get dirty there's a battle ahead so don't compromise you have the strength and courage to stand your ground and defend what you have built okay then we go on to the ten of wands you're overburdened you're back hunched over in pain as you try to move, you're carrying something so large you can't even see what's right in front of you. Take a long, hard look at how you're spending your time and energy. You're not managing it well, and it is burning you out. Now, maybe the time to find support. Page of Wands. The page is always bursting with new ideas, new things to do, new things to learn and study. She wants it all doesn't quite yet have the maturity to focus on following through with her fleeting passions. Everything is possible and it's exciting. If the page is you, you're in an experimental stage, so try everything and follow your whims. Eventually you'll find something that clicks. The Knight of Wands. This knight is all action and doesn't spare any time to stop and think. They pursue their goals singularly and recklessly. Their unstoppable passion is inspiring, but comes with risks. If the night is you, it's time to be bold and see, seize that crazy opportunity in front of you. It won't stick around for long. Enjoy this feeling of total confidence in yourself. Just be aware there can be unforeseen consequences for acting too impulsively. Okay, so I just realized that I don't think I gave my one word definitions for the page or this one, the 10 of wands, um, 10 of wands. My one word definition is either burden or accomplishment. You're either almost at the end of the goal. <laughs> You've almost accomplished it or, uh, accomplished it or, um, um, or whatever you're doing is real heavy load. Okay, and then the Page of Wands, I always think of this as an, um, a curious child, but like the explorer kind, the one that goes finds a jun jungle in your backyard, right? Um, and then the Knight of Wands, I've always kind of thought as, um, oh, a sexy young man. Perhaps he's a bit of a player. He is passionate, full of energy, impulsive, coming towards you real fast, um, so yeah, that's how I've always interpreted the Nine of Wands. And then, um, did I read the Nine of Wands? Let's see. The Knight is all action and doesn't spare any time to stop and think. They pursue their goals singularly and recklessly. Their unstoppable passion is inspiring but comes with risks. If the Knight is you, it's time to be bold and seize that crazy opportunity in front of you. It won't stick around for long. Enjoy this feeling of total confidence in yourself, but just be aware there can be unforeseen consequences for acting too impulsively. All right, the Queen of Wands. Queen of Wands. Ooh. Look at her. Okay, her legs are crossed here instead of like, you know, different. She's wearing a different dress too. Colors are similar. Um, crown is similar. Um, feels like there's crystals on the top. 
part of her crown there. Let's see. No, they're just blue flowers. Um, she's got rep, uh, Leo represented in the back here. Um, lots of sun card energy, right, with all of those sunflowers. Um, so, yeah, they kept a lot of the uh, same elements um, as the original. And the Queen of Wands, for me, she's just kind of like, she's actually uh, an effective business leader. She is confident. She is determined. She inspires um, she's independent and she cheers on her, her people. So she's an excellent like business leader. Um, the queen is bursting with life and infectious energy. You can't help but feeling you could take on the world when you're around her. Her confidence and go to itness is so powerful. She motivates you to do shit. If you're the queen, life is giving it all to you right now. Good luck, ideas, friends, promotions. So channel this bounty into confidence. You know your strengths and weaknesses and how to utilize all your skills to get what you want. So get it, girl. All right. Uh, next is the King of Wands. Um, and looks like we have another, um, I want to say, well, it's another female character, but I still feels non-binary. Um, in any case, um, we've kept the side profile of the king. Um, and my, my, um, my thing for the king, yeah, he's leadership, but he's more like entrepreneurship and he's, um, it just, it's a more grounded energy, I think, than, uh, or foundational energy than maybe the queen. The queen is more nurturing of, of the passion. Um, he, he's actually the, the person who sets it in motion and it doesn't mean that the same person can't do both. Um. It's just different. It's just the masculine energy. Um, so it's more foundational, I feel like. All right. But he is um, he is an entrepreneur. He is um, leadership, and he does motiv motivate people. Um, so the commanding leader, totally confident in their actions and abilities. The king can be an inspiring teacher or a boss you really respect. If the king is you, it might be time to step up and take control in a particular situation. Don't be afraid to take the lead. You can channel your passions into action and energy. You've got the skill to be in charge. Um, so even in the definition, you can see how like it's a similar energy of entrepreneurship and kind of getting people motivated, uh, but it's subdued. I don't know, for me. And maybe that's just the way I'm saying it. <laughs> but that's how it feels. Um, the masculine energy is more subdued, I guess, maybe for me. All right. The Ace of Cups, something beautiful and full of love has just begun and your cup is so full it spills out into a pool below. You'll feel yourself filled with the radiant positivity, happiness, and joy. Be receptive. You've been blessed with life-giving love, so welcome all your new endeavors. And I always think of this as new love, new passion of some sort, like a new love, like I love tarot cards. And when it was, when I got my first, second, we'll say my second tarot deck, then it was like, I love tarot cards. So to me, it can be a new beginning of like a new passion like that, like a new hobby, but not something that, <clears throat> just something you can fall, the falling in love part of it, not necessarily like starting up an end goal project like you would with the Ace of Wands. So this to me is a new love. In a romance reading, this is a new love. Like somebody new coming into your life who's going to shower you with a little affection. Um, <clears throat> where there might be the inklings of something new. Um, so yeah, new love is my one word kind of definition for that one. Then we've got the Two of Cups. This is true love. <laughs> There's a super amazing, spectacular person in your life, or there's about to be. You love being in their company so much. Each time you're together feels like a party, and your heart is just bursting full of love for them. Get drunk on love. Enjoy them beside you, and let them fill your cup. And the Three of Cups is a celebration. That's my one word for that one. Time to raise those cups high and cheer because there's a celebration in order. You're surrounded by friends that love you and you love them. So now's the time to show it. Either you are 
you or a close friend has possibly achieved something incredible, or maybe you just really recognizing how much they mean to you. Either way, it's time to party. Um, and just kind of as a reminder, um, cups is relationships and emotions. It's like the things you care about. Um, just as a reminder. Uh oh. So this card has a number of different meanings for me. Um, one of them is boredom. Another one is rejection. Um, another one is kind of apathy. So those are the three kind of one word definitions that I have for this one. Um, but rejection feels hmm, pretty consistent for both of these cards. Um, okay, so the four of cups, life is full of disappointments imperfections and unhappiness. You might be feeling super cynical lately, like nothing ever goes your way and the cards are stacked against you. But that negativity isn't going to get you anywhere and dwelling too long on regrets or failures isn't healthy. If you just change your outlook, start saying yes instead of no to the world, you will find there's still support and beautiful things waiting. Five of cups. Oh, the difference is she's sitting next to a building He's sitting next to a tree. Both of them sort of meditating. Her phone is down. Um, I would say she might be more disappointed than him because her shirt says over it. Like, I just get this overwhelming sense of no mas. <laughs> no more. No more. All right, here we go. Um, I do love this, this deck of cards. This is actually, I understand why it's so popular now. Um, I really, really, really do. Um, it's more, so much more relatable and, and it's just so subtle in the differences, right? So you have the city scape in the background really changes for me. At one point I did live in New York city and I'm just like, yeah, cityscape, cool, resonates, feeling it. All right. Five of cups, something, oh, this is, um, loss. If you're for your one word, this is grief or loss. Five of cups, something important has been lost and you're Filled with soul-crushing sadness and despair. Maybe a relationship has ended or you've been laid off work. Whatever it was has destroyed your hopes for the perfect future you had envisioned. It's okay to feel defeated and, and mourn. Sadness is part of the process. You'll start to feel hope again eventually. And there's more love waiting for you when you're ready. All right. And then we have the Six of Cups. Um, to me, this is a nostalgia card. Um, good memories, you know. All right. Six of cups. You're being called. And um, this also refers like if you're doing your own readings, um, which I highly recommend that you do, you'll learn so much about yourself. Um, this is inner child work. That's it. That's your inner child um, card there. Um, when you get this in a reading for a love reading for somebody else or even for yourself, um, it could feel like true love or soulmates. Um, okay, so six of cups. You're being called to embrace family and friends with kindness and compassion. Spread your love and sweetness to those you care about and nurture your connections. You might also fe be feeling a little nostalgic. Maybe there's something painful from your childhood that needs examining. Just don't forget to be kind to your past self. Embrace them. Yes, definitely be kind to your past self. You're doing the best you could with what you had. All right, seven of cups. To me, this is wishes. Um, love, spiritual wisdom, money, success, power. It seems like all the treasures are just out there waiting for you to grab. You're dreaming so big that you're in the clouds and totally out of touch with reality. It's time to step back down to earth and do the hard work required to be mentally healthy. Only then can those big dreams become attainable. Um, yeah, and they've kept all the same stuff in there for the most part. Um, instead of a dragon, it looks like they have a natural disaster. <laughs> I kind of like that interpretation. Um, they have over here the, the castle. And in this cup here, they show a hand with a fist, which is I'm interpreting as power. So I do like the kind of translation from the old to the new. I think it's very, very relevant. Very good. Alrighty, seven of cups. Now we're going on to the eight of cups. Uh, this to me is is a walking away card. Um, but the way that all these cups are stacked in a row, 
Um, this is off to a new journey for me. And maybe that's just my life. That's where it is. But this does not look like a person who's walking away from like things that they loved in the past. They're walking away from a completed journey of the past onto the next adventure. Um, but there's a sadness with walking away. So a lot of people, and I think that's why there's, it's in the moonlight. You're walking away in the, in the dark and the moonlight, which is kind of like bittersweet. <laughs> All right. So eight of cups. This knight is confident. Oh, sorry, wrong one. There we go. Eight of Cups. <laughs> it's tough. But whenever you've been pouring all your love and emotion, whatever you've been pouring all your love and emotion into, you need to step away. It's just not working out. It's time to say goodbye and move forward. It might be very difficult. You've invested a lot of your time and energy into this after all. But wisdom comes from knowing when something is hopeless, learning from it, and moving on. So moving on is probably um, a gentler way of interpreting this card um, than maybe walking away. Same thing. <laughs> Nine of Cups. I always um, think of this as all of your wishes have been fulfilled. So all those cups in um, Seven of Cups here, um, you have made all of those, you filled them all up. You've made all those dreams come true. You got your power, your money, your heart, your wealth. All right. So nine of cups, uh, treat yourself. You've been killing it lately and you deserve a nice reward after your success and accomplishments. Throw a party, buy yourself something nice, have a spa day, do something you want to only for you show yourself the love you deserve. So I do like this as wishes fulfilled. That's how I've always kind of like interpreted this, but I do like, um, this as a self love card, um, and interpreting that, um, as yeah, loving yourself. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense, right? We have the hermit, which is self reflection, right? We have the nine of wands, which is like good boundaries. That's protecting ourself, self loving us nine of cups, protecting our self emotions. Um, Nine of Swords, probably protecting your um, your thoughts or having control of your thoughts so you don't have anxiety. And then what is the last one? Oh, the Nine of Pentacles is Nine of Abundance, which is, or Nine of Pentacles is Abundance. So anyways, sorry, all of those were connecting with me and I shared with you as it was coming into my mind. <laughs> um, so yeah, I like this definition of um, self-love for, for this particular card. All right, moving on to the Ten of Cups. Wishes fulfilled. Um, actually, happy family. That's what I always think of this card as happy family. Um, it's a beautiful day. A rainbow shines brightly in a clear blue sky and all is full of joy. You've been through your... Uh, been through some trials and tribulations, but your home life is perfectly at peace and in balance. Stop and smell the roses, appreciate your loved ones around you, and just enjoy these beautiful moments. So, um, happy family, joy, um, definitely um, a, a good a good card, a yes card if you get it, um, if you're asking that kind of question. Then we get into the um, Page of Cups. I always think of this as like a new love opportunity, um, but the Page of Cups as a person is usually an empathetic child is kind of how I think of um, the Page of Cups. Um, they're dreamers. They're sensitive. They're artistic. Okay. What... <sighs> What's that? A surprising little fish poking its head up from her cup. Something or someone unexpected is coming your way and it's going to affect your emotions pretty wildly. Maybe you've been hit by a wave of inspiration or you've stumbled upon a brand new friend. Whatever it is, it's a tidal wave of feelings. Don't be afraid to just wade right in. All right. And this is our knight in shining armor, the knight of cups. Prince Charming. He's bringing you a cup of love. His cup of love. Um, the knight is confident, charming, and wonderful to be around. They instantly draw you in, but be aware that they are not focused on you. They're focused entirely on their cup and are constantly looking for those brand new feelings of love and passion. This is a relationship that won't last for long as much as, much as you'd like it to. If the knight is you, you've been chasing feelings a little too much and need to take the time to nurture your existing friendships and relationships. Ew. 
I never thought of the Knight of Cups as desperate, but damn, <laughs> that's the total vibe I got from that. <laughs> I was like, in a love reading, I usually interpret that as a date, but now I'm like, it's some desperate dude um, or girl, I guess. Desperate guy or girl. Um, I mean, it's the hills are smaller, fewer trees and greenery. Colors are similar. The colors are just off a little bit. And I think there's a psychology behind the kind of colors that they're using because either that or the artist is colorblind. <laughs> I don't think that's it. I think the use of colors is appropriate. Um, but yeah, the colors, I mean, are slightly different, but they're they're definitely Rider weight inspired. Um, and I like the update of the leather jacket, right? Um, we've got the Queen of Cups, the emotional queen. Um... She's comforting and therapeutic guide. She's deeply in tune with the inner worlds of emotions, highly empathetic and creative. She spends a lot of her time gazing out into the waters of unconscious, and it might be difficult to keep her on solid ground. If this card is you, trust your intuition and feelings and creative endeavors. If you search within, you will find a wealth of creativity and inspiration that will guide you down the right pathway. And then we go to the... This is a much similar card, uh, simpler card. Um, I like the inspirations of mer of mermaids. I do feel like she very much looks like a mermaid with the blue hair. Um, on her chair, we've got um, an angel. On this chair, we have uh, a mermaid. Um, the chalice in this one is much more ornate. Um, so is her crown. Um, oh, maybe these are, are mermaids up here, mermaid babies. This looks more like an angel to me, but maybe it's a mermaid baby too. Mermaid cherubs. I'm interesting. Um, so yeah, we don't get to see her feet here. It almost feels like she could sink into the water as easily as she could be on the beach. Um, right? And maybe that's a good uh, description of the Queen of Cups being that she's a very loving, intuitive, psychic, spiritual being. All right. Let's move on to the King of Cups. And I always view him as being a compassionate, empathetic person who's completely in control of his own emotions, which is hopefully what I'll one day get to being that this is my card as a Scorpio. Uh, King of Cups. They're calming and their cup is brimming with love and compassion. They draw strength from treating others with tenderness and kindness, and they are truly in touch with all their emotions. They're the kind of person who you feel perfectly at ease with because their presence is sincere and accepting. If this indicates a relationship, you're finally fully able to let down all your walls and feel comfortable and loved by this person. If the king is you, you're doing a beautiful job just as a friend and confident, so be proud. All right, Ace of Swords. All right, I always look at this as clarity of thought because swords is all thought. So wands is passion, cups is emotion, swords is thought. The things that we think about and speak about. Um, it's all like the head area. Um, it can also be um, some of your intuition a little bit. Um, but I would say that that's more towards your emotion and your your cups. Um, but yeah, I, I do this more like thinking and, and this is kind of like cutting, it, it feels more like truth. Truth is kind of ace of swords for me, cutting to the truth, um, getting to the core, um, of a truth. So it's a new understanding. Um, is another way of kind of like looking at the Ace of Swords. But let's see what it says here. It says, A rush of clarity and inspiration comes with the beginning of this journey. You may feel as though your thoughts are racing constantly. The wheels are turning and you've reached a revelation. This is just the beginning of a difficult path, though. And you'll need all your wits and reason about you to see it through. Okay, so the Two of Swords 
You've raised your defenses, steeled yourself against opposition, and blind blindfolded yourself by refusing to budge. You've blindfolded yourself to the truth of a difficult situation. Maybe you've shut off your emotions as a, a defense me mechanism, or you're refusing to see things logically. Perhaps you are stuck in analysis paralysis. Either way, you're not dealing with the problem honestly. Take off the blindfold and confront the issue. And I always look at this as a decision to be made. Just keeping it simple on those one word definitions. <laughs> um, a decision is something, you know, you think about. <laughs> um, and, and I never feel like the decision is like an easy one, right? It's like... There are consequences on either side. Um, and and things that you can't see beyond the, the consequences of those decisions. So anyways. Um, there we go. Three of swords. One word, heartbreak. <laughs> second one, maybe miscommunication. All right, so we've got uh, three of swords. You're in it. Uh, you're in for a stab of betrayal and heartbreak. Someone close to you has hurt you deeply, betrayed your trust, or has been deeply inconsiderate to you. You don't have to toughen up. It's okay to feel pretty shitty about the situation. It hurts. If you haven't experienced this pain, do a little soul searching and make sure you're not treating anyone else poorly. Okay, so. I think the interesting part of having a bleeding heart here is the darkness of that blood. And I'm like, what is this heart bleeding? Um, the rain is slightly different. The clouds are a little bit different. Um, ooh, maybe like the shadow in your heart, the darkness in your heart, the heartbreak that sticks with you. Heartbreak. Ooh, if you're on the inner journey, right? Um, pair that with the moon card. <laughs> so that looks like some serious um, shadow work and healing. Um, tell me what you guys think of that dark blood, I guess, dripping out of the three of swords that we don't have in the traditional Rider Waite. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I just feel like uh, almost cuts deeper. <laughs> <laughs> that three of swords than the other one. Um, all right, so four of swords. Four of swords. Um, I always, this the card I recognize. I always, my one word definition for this one is rest. And the struggle is real. You're goddamn exhausted. You've been putting time and energy fully into all the outer aspects of your life, like friends, your relationship, or your job, and you have forgotten to care for your uh, to care of yourself. You're worn out, so take a break, relax, close your eyes, meditate, take a nap, do what you need to in order to recharge. Um. <clears throat> I don't know. There's lots of differences. This one's on a slab like he died at a wake. She's in a bed, which is more in alignment with like the meaning of the card. But we have no idea where the slab comes from. You know, this is a pictorial, a 2000 year old pictorial history and probably even longer. So, you know, at some point, I'm sure a slab was a luxury too. <laughs> Just a flat, flat space to throw out your bedroll. <laughs> I don't know. Um, they also had stained glass window here, whereas here you can see um, the clouds outside. I like the, the clouds outside because of the, um, uh, and the sky, just because, I don't know, it just reminds me more air, air sign stuff. Um, yeah. But yeah, this one, rest. Five of swords. This feels like. I've always interpreted this card and I can't ever get the words right, but it feels like an undeserved win, like taking candy from a baby, kind of like, um, like this person back here is clearly distraught, right? This person's walking away, accepts their loss. Um, and this person was like, I'm a pro. I just took, 
I knew I, I took it. I knew I was going to take it. It was easy to take it. I just took it. So I always wonder like, which person is, are you in, in, in here? Right. You know, did you take a win too easily? Did you take, you know, did you take advantage? Um, did you just accept your loss or are you really heartbroken behind it? Did you really suffer <laughs> something large from losing your swords there? All right. So the five of swords here is you, you're definitely feeling strong, maybe a little angry or a little fed up with the situation and you're prepared to throw punches. If you choose to go this route, you'll definitely win, but there's probably, uh, but there will probably be unforeseen consequences. So you're forced or so you're focused on the situation. You're not thinking about the future. Stop and consider the situation for a second before you do something you'll regret. All right. Six of Swords. Um, this is a moving on card similar to the um, Eight of Cups. Um, they kind of mean the same thing. This is going on to a new but safer journey. So I, I often look at this as kind of like moving away from a bad situation. Um, swords are kind of intense. Right? <laughs> our thoughts can be, our thoughts can be daggers for sure. Um, and and if you're in a bad situation, thoughts can be even more painful yours or others. Um, so anyways, this is, um, this is a safe passage into the next part of your, your life. You're going into a safer place or you're moving on at the very least. Um, all right. So this one says you're feeling, uh, sorry, six of swords. You're going to need to make a difficult choice. One that might feel painful and almost impossible. However, you know, uh, you know deep down that this is the best path forward. It's definitely going to be rough waters for a while and your emotions may fight you, but logic tells you this is what you need to do. Be well as you walk forward into the unknown. And I definitely look at this, not here, but here as kind of a battered wives card, uh, but definitely moving away from a bad situation or just moving away from a situation, just moving on to the next, moving on. <laughs> Just moving on. Movement card. There we go. Number seven, deception. Um, that's the one word definition I have for that one. It says sometimes in life we can be completely open and honest. A little lie, even just one of omission, may be tactfully required in challenging situation. Maybe you're dealing with a truly awful uh, co-worker or an abusive relationship and you need some secrets to keep yourself safe. Just be careful that your deceit isn't hurting yourself or others and that it is truly the best way to deal with the situation. Um, I always look at this as a card rather than, um, uh, I really try not to look at it as somebody is lying to you <laughs> in the relationship readings and even in the business readings, somebody is not telling you the whole truth. Um, and if it's in the reverse, I often see it as a confession that somebody has not told you the whole truth. If you're doing a reading for yourself, how are you lying to yourself? And, it, um, and, um, and if it comes up in the reverse, what do you need to confess? Right? That's how I kind of read this card. Um, but if you're reading for someone else and you're really not sure which way to go, go with the question. What is your relationship with the truth? There you go. That's my nugget for the seven of swords. All right. Eight of swords, anxiety, self-imposed anxiety. Um, you're feeling trapped, blinded, unable to take action because all your swords are stuck on the ground and they seem too difficult to pull out. But those ropes aren't very tight. And with just a little struggle, they'll fall right off. Don't surrender to hopelessness and negativity. You may, you might have made some mistakes that have gotten you here, but you have the skill you'll need to get yourself out of this situation. Um, yeah, I feel like, uh, this is like, a. It's just an anxiety card, right? It, it is a different kind of anxiety, right? It's where we're trapped by our own ruminations and our own thoughts. She's got a million thoughts. They won't go anywhere. And here she is just tied up in all of them, right? And she can't see the truth. She doesn't want to see the truth, um, whatever it is. But it's definitely her own truth and her own thoughts. Um, and she's being um, trapped by them. But uh, Yeah.
All right, so we've got Nine of Swords. This is the anxiety card. This is the shit that keeps you up at night. That's my one word definition. <laughs> Nine of Swords. The sword hangs high above your head and you're wide awake at night. You can't sleep as your mind is just consumed with anxiety, despair, and impending feeling of doom. Maybe you're going through something truly terrible, or maybe you've been building up an obstacle to be larger than it really is. Either way, it's okay to feel scared or anxious. Talk about it with someone that you trust and try to look to the future. <clears throat> I like the quilt. I like how they kept the roses, but they kind of updated it. Um, she's wearing a hat to bed. I don't I've never worn a hat to bed. I guess maybe when I'm camping and it's freezing cold. <laughs> and she's kind of on a cot, so yeah, maybe she's out in the cold and she's scared and anxious. Who knows? Um, very cool. This one feels more like heartbreak. This one feels more like despair. But they're both despair, right? In different ways. All right. <clears throat> Moving on. This is the author in her book. This is the one she said that started the entire deck. <clears throat> and it's like um, her social media killed her. <laughs> like the day she found out her ex moved on. Maybe. I don't know. Um, but that is what started this entire deck. And um, it's a completion card. Um, Ten of Swords. Everything is fine. It's fine. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Everything is fine. Um, yeah, this is like over. <laughs> Dead and over in here. This is... Everything is fine. It's fine. Really sure you've been completely pierced through with ten sharp swords and you're collapsed in a ball on the floor. You're struggling, just trying to survive as the weight grows ever heavier. You're going through something truly soul crushing and it feels like your world is ending. Every movement hurts and sometimes only a meaningless distraction feels like it'll help. But the pain will end and you will come out stronger having survived it. <clears throat> right? This is a cutting away for the diamond to emerge. <laughs> One of those experiences. But yeah, I like readers who, who say this is a new beginning because whatever was here before is not. All right, here we go. Page of Swords. Okay, <clears throat> this card, for whatever reason, it's a me thing. But she is the most insecure Um card of the whole deck. So whenever I get a page of swords, even though she's curious and super smart and a thinker, right? Um, uh, on the reverse side of that, she's insecure about it because she overthinks everything. But in any case, page of swords, this page is full of wild energy and drive. She's relentless in her actions and does not sit still for long. She never runs out of crazy things to do or say a true idealist. She can be a little exhausting in her youthful determination. If the page is you dive head first into your wild schemes and plans and find those who will support you in your crazy ideas. Um, so yeah, I would just say, uh, Whew, for the Page of Swords, um, she's just a, she's a curious thinker. She's got a thirst for knowledge. She's going to be the science -y kid, right? Um, who does experiments. All right. Then we move on to the Knight of Swords. This is usually, I always look at this as a hothead young man rushing in, um, maybe before he has all of the facts. I think the downfall of the knights, all of the knights, is they're always rushing in, with one exception, the Knight of Pentacles. He is patient. But uh, <laughs> the rest of them, they're all kind of rushing in. Um, all right, so the Knight of Swords, bursting into the onto the scene with fervor and confidence, the knight rushes headlong 
at their obstacles without a second thought. They are passionate and fully self-assured in their intelligence and opinions, but they're sorely lacking compassion and heart. If the night is you, it is time to second guess yourself. You are probably a bit cold and overconfident, and possibly afraid of showing some vulnerability. It's left you imbalanced and ill-prepared for what lies ahead. All right. Queen of Swords. The Queen has unflinching perception and can cut to the truth of the matter in seconds. She can be blunt, brutally honest, and very forward. But just because she's truthful doesn't mean she's lacking compassion and humor. She still she's still understanding because she can truly see the entire situation for what it is. If you're the queen, it's time to set your emotions aside and try to view things intelligently with clarity and honesty. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if anybody's going to be the judge for the justice card, it's going to be her. She is the one who's going to really kind of see the truth in people. Um, and I think she's got that unflinching perception just because um, it's almost like she can, there's a purpose to the coldness of her quality, right? You can see the truth if you're emotionally um, distanced from it. So she's the third party or, you know, the outside looking in. All right, so um, we've got butterfly, butterfly. Um, the moons are missing, which I kind of miss, um, to be honest, because I think it is important to recognize that she, the queen is not unemotional. Um, she's less um, emotional, but she's still in tuned in emotional way with spirit, with her intuition. So... Um, I say I miss the moons a little bit, but other than that, we've got this dove here, this bird here. So, um, freedom of thought is kind of a newer meaning that comes to mind with that. Then we've got the king of swords. He's usually like a military guy, right? He's strategic thinker in charge like that. <clears throat> and he... The king is truly uh, the king of swords. The king is truly intelligent, deeply concerned with truth, ethics, and honesty. The king brings brings with them a certain authority. They may be a role model in your life. They are wise and seek to be a role, or they are wise and seek to be righteous and fair in all that they do. However, they are so concerned with knowledge and solving problems efficiently, they may lack some tenderness and compassion in dealing with personal issues. If the king is you, step up and utilize your intelligence and problem-solving skills where they are needed. Strong leadership may be asked of you. Um, and this just reminds me of doctors, right? Who are like super good at what they do. They want to help people. Like that's how they want to give service, but they don't have like the same emotional range as the rest of us in the same way that I don't have the same vocal range as Mariah Carey. That's kind of how I... <laughs> interpret emotional range is the same way you know you would interpret vocal range um all right moving on to pentacles yay new money <laughs> um yeah this is new money new resources what you need is coming to you and that's kind of how i think of this one this is a manifestation of the resources that you need um they are being presented to you. So let's see what it says here in the book. It says, Ace of Pentacles, the world around you is full of possibilities and promise right now. Engage with it. Go on a bike ride. Take a bath. Make some tea. Plant some flowers. And enthrall your senses. You are in this world, on this planet. So live your life and let the good things come to you. Um, Yeah, I like the use of color. Even though like there's like more like little detailed flowers here, I feel like I'm looking at more here. I love that the nails are painted. I feel like it's a little witchy. <laughs> Those are a little bit witchy nails, which is awesome. <laughs> Cause I really actually, you know, I, I said it was kind of an inclusive thing, but I just don't feel like there's been very many masculine characters in here. Um, there's some, but not many. Um, 
if anything, more androgynous characters is what I would say. Um, for um, the masculine energies of this deck. But I do really appreciate um, the divine feminine um, really expressed in this deck a lot. Um, and I think like witchiness is, uh, I don't know. <laughs> One of those things that's divine feminine. Um, all right, Ace of Pentacles, moving on. The world around you is full of possibilities. And, oh, wait, I already did that one. Sorry, guys. Um, let the good things come to you. Wait, you are in this world, on this planet, so live your life and let the good things come to you. Two of Pentacles, here we are. Um, this is always like um, balance is one of the definitions I use for one word. Um, I always think of it as balancing finances. Um, because pentacles is often money and resources, um, balancing resources, you know, <laughs> but balancing twos for me are often decisions. Um, you're experiencing all the busy challenges of everyday life and handling it gracefully. You're in sync with the rhythms of the world and every movement and decision feels like a perfectly orchestrated dance. As long as you're adaptable and flexible, you'll be able to continue this dance. Okay, so one of the things I like about this deck, for whatever reason, um, they're doing it, I don't know about consistently, I, I didn't notice it, I noticed it in the star card, but I'm noticing it again now, um, where the infinity symbol is a, like a mirrored shape, like they're yeah, mirrored shapes there. I envy the people who can master this dance. <laughs> Three of Pentacles. Um, my one word definition for this one. Sorry, they're getting like. My one word definition for Three of Pentacles is teamwork. Um, working together. Three of Pentacles. Your passion for learning and improving your skills is going to pay off. You've been faithfully dedicating yourself to a project or to your job and someone above you is looking to reward you for all this hard work. You have the talent to see it through and soon you'll be where you want to be. Um, I've also seen this card interpreted as, um, not just teamwork, but as, um, using the tools around you like education and mentors to, um, accomplish a goal. Um, and even here in this picture here, she needs the, the model. Um, she needs the, the mentor, um, to kind of oversee her project. Four of Pentacles. Yes, all ladies here and big puffy jackets from like city life. I love it. And we all got heels. <clears throat> okay. Um, <clears throat> Four of Pentacles. My one word is conserve. Um, conserve your resources, save your money, pulling back your energy from other people. So I would say conserve is <laughs> my one word for four pentacles. You've been busy with your balancing act, tightly clutching all your money and material things close in order to help you feel safe and stable. It's been working for a while, but somehow you, you still can't relax. You might need to give up a little control because all this stress about money isn't making you happy. Um... If you get this card in a, in a money reading or a career reading, um, if you're, if you, um, if you or your person that you're, um, reading for, you, you, um, may question how you might be able to act and think and um, shift your perspective from a place of lack to a place of having already or having abundance or yeah having it already <laughs> instead of feeling like oh I don't have enough it's okay to conserve your energy and stuff but yeah there is kind of like a miserly kind of um, attribute to the four that is attributed to um, the four to four of pentacles okay here we go <laughs> five of pentacles Ah, oh, I always look at this as turning away from help, help, 
that's what I, and, and going a different direction, like, or even needing help and not asking for it. Um, it's a poverty card. Um, and yeah, it's a poverty card. Five of Pentacles. Don't be too proud or scared to ask for help. You're struggling and you feel like there's absolutely nothing to do but put your head down and try and suffer through it. But if you look around, you'll see there's warmth and loved ones who are willing to help you out in some sense. Even if it's just a kind shoulder to cry on, they'll help you weather the storm. I'm like, there's differences, but I'm like, okay, well, this is clearly, um, a person on crutches here. And this is, um, you know, a person without shoes. They don't have shoes. These guys have shoes. I'm like, these guys have it good in comparison to here. I'm like, this is a perspective card for me. I'm like, if I'm clarifying these cards, I'm like, this is perspective here. <laughs> you might be out in the cold, but you can go find some worth somewhere. We'll go to the six of pentacles this is a giving and receiving card for me um and sometimes you're on the giving side and sometimes you're on the receiving side um so six of pentacles it's all about the money um money resources pentacles money resources okay anyway sorry it's all about the money maybe you've had a stream of good luck and you're rolling in it and relishing this newfound wealth be generous but also be careful not to fall into bad spending habits or maybe you're struggling and dependent on others for your revenue you should see a good windfall soon so use it wisely either way be conscious of your attitude towards money and be wary you're not supporting mentally unhealthy habits all right like a good mantra for this one it might be like money loves me <laughs> everything i need comes to me easily I don't know. That's the word I use. Um, okay, seven of pentacles. To me, this is like planting seeds. You know, it's like, okay, I'm going to put a little money in stock, a little money in bitcoins. I'm going to put uh, a little time and energy into YouTube. I'm going to start an e-commerce store. I'm going to have like a little side job over here. Um, so to me, each of these pentacles being planted here is kind of like, and that you're nurturing and you're growing, is hopefully going to grow into something that's fruitful. That's kind of how I look at just the seven of pentacles period. Um, so I do kind of look at it as like tending your garden, planting seeds and tending your garden. So here's what the book says. It says it's time for a much needed break. Step away from whatever project you've been nurturing and take some time to relax. Maybe everything's going perfectly and you can see the rewards on the horizon, or maybe you're stuck and unsure what to do next. Either way, some time away will give you a fresh new perspective when you come back. All right, Eight of Pentacles. This is mastering your craft, doing the work, getting into your stuff and like, just it's doing the work, right? If you're a painter and you go out and say, I'm a painter and I'm an artist, I'm a painter, this is the work. This is the painting that is happening. Um, and this always looks like hours for me, right? This is the full-time job. This is what you're great at. Um, all right, so Eight of Pentacles. There's there can be no success without hard work, whether you've got an important deadline, a project you've been procrastinating on, or you're looking to improve your situation. It's time to buckle down and get to it. It can feel like a slog, sure, but it's definitely, but it will definitely be worth all the time and energy. The proud feeling when you're finally done will be absolutely amazing. Um, I do like the update here where she's actually in a chair and not on a bench, um, where we're not, we're no longer carving, but we have graphic design. That's some cool stuff. <laughs> Sorry. This is like, um, that's, that's something. That's something right there, right? That's some, that's something that looks like hard work. This looks like creative work. All right. Moving on nine of pentacles. This is just a straight up um, I always say boss bitch, um, but this is an abundance card. This is like, I got all my shit together. My career is popping. My house is awesome. My friends are cool. Um, I'm going on vacation. I am boss. Like I am awesome. So this is nine of pentacles. Oh, 
what the kids are all saying now, goat. This is the goat right here. This is what <laughs> you are greatest of all time right now um, when you're at Nine of Pentacles. Um, so everything is wine and roses right now, and you can finally get comfortable and enjoy it. You've made smart decisions, managed your time and money wisely, and now you can sit back and enjoy the fruits of your labor. Treat yourself to something decadent when you've truly earned it. All right, and then we go to the Ten of Pentacles. Oh, I didn't, I'm having trouble with this small um, print that I keep having to take off my glasses, so I keep forgetting to compare the the two of these. Oh, I like that she's got kind of like tomato plants back here. Um, she pulled up some carrots, so she's kind of like, um, she's got like cabbages down here. So now she gets the fruit of her labor is what she's getting here. Here, <clears throat> I'm like, I kind of identify with this lady more in the sense that I'm like, um, decadent. I feel like this is more decadent and this is more kind of like real, you know, like the American dream where, you know, you have your, your home and your garden and you just, I don't know, that's a whole other decadence too. So, um, and they kept the bird on her hat here and they kept the hat. And some of the colors, the reds, definitely they, they um, dug into the reds. And I like that they dug into the reds because you do have to be pretty grounded and rooted in order to have that kind of stability that the Nine of Pentacles brings. All right. Ten of Pentacles. This is the ultimate wealth and happiness right here. This is legacy. This is a legacy card, if you ask me. Everything in your life is coming together magically. No more stress-filled nights worrying about money or rent or your job. You've done the work required to create some stability. Your home is full of love, satisfaction, and comforts. There's no need to do anything drastic or radical. Believe it or not, you've found some peace. Allow yourself to welcome, to welcome it in. All right. So the next one is the page of... Oh, differences... We're inside the home. We have the happy family here, and we've got a, a multi-generational family, um, which they've kind of kept here as well. They've kept the couple facing one another. Um, the child here is pulling on robes, whereas the child here is up in her arms, which, um, yeah, that feels right. Holding your kid is a good thing. Um, and then we have the dogs here, but we've changed the colors from white um, to gray and um, dark gray. Um, so very cool. Um, now we have Page of Pentacles. She is the most studious. Uh oh, here we go. Um, of the of the pages, right? This is the kid who um, studies straight A's. Um, captain of the chess club, um, mathletics for this person, every right thing to get into Harvard. Um, that's the page of pentacles. This is a very curious person, not just looking for, for knowledge, but practical application of that knowledge. Okay. Page of pentacles. Oh, glasses off. What's the difference between the two? This one has a bag, probably a laptop <laughs> and glasses. So she has a different vision or a different view um, than what he's got. And hers are rose colored. Um, so she seems to see the good in the world um, is what I want to say there. All right. So page of pentacles. This page is truly de dedicated and focused on their goals. She might be young or inexperienced, but she has the drive and determination needed to venture forward. Don't disregard this person. They are truly talented and will rise to the occasion when it comes. If the page is you, it's time to focus up and commit to that thing you've been daydreaming about. Start taking concrete steps to bring that magic into the world. So yeah, ambition is a, is a good, um, probably a good definition or one word, um, definition for the page of pentacles. Cause maybe you're not, don't have a lot of people in your life. Maybe there isn't a child or a young person in your life that fits this definition. Maybe there's not a person in your life acting, um, this way, then you, it might be just your own inner child, your own raw ambition, um, in a reading. So 
pages and queens and all that stuff. It's not always people. It's slices of, of, of our personalities or our interpretation of personality. But that's just me. <laughs> there are a gazillion schools of thought. Okay. Um, moving on to the Knight of Pentacles. Um, whenever I get this in a reading, the very first thing I think is patience. He is at a standstill. He is looking out over his domain, his dominion. This guy is management, right? He's just management. That's all he does. He's the most patient, most reliable <laughs> knight. I'm thinking he's probably better than the Knight of Cups, um, but he's like... I don't know. I always view him as probably boring, maybe. Um, in any case, let's, let's talk about the Knight of Pentacles, of Patience. Um, and let's see here. I've got no armor. I don't know. I don't know how I feel. There's not, like, there's just timeline differences, I guess, in the style of the cards. Okay, Knight of Pentacles. The Knight is solid, dependable, and obviously has a serious work ethic. They have no problem keeping their head down and getting the work done, and they'll do it perfectly. Their attention to detail and their ability to, to, live, to deliver is admirable. If the Knight is you, it's time to toil away and get shit done. It's going to take long, hard work, but you'll probably find some enjoyment and satisfaction in the process. Yeah, these guys are definitely patient. All right, we've got our queen of pentacles and she's like just below the empress um, in the sense that she's wealthy, abundant, sharing, caring, nurturing. Um, those are all of the things that I think of when I think of um, the queen of pentacles. Very honest. Um, so the queen is rich in more ways than one. She has a stable and simple life that she has filled with things, people, and activities that bring her joy. She is nurturing and generous, seeks to bring happiness, and provides a sanctuary to those she loves. If you are the queen, it is time to be nurturing and caring. It could be as simple as taking some time to cook a meal for a good friend or buying a cute plant for someone special. Be kind. It suits you. All right. So she's she's luxurious, the Queen of Pentacles. So is the King of Pentacles. He is the King of Kings. Actually, no. The Emperor is the King of Kings. He is just below the Emperor. Um, he, he's, uh, he's almost like a kingmaker, right? The guy who's got the money gets to invest in the King of Wands and the King of Cups and the King of Swords. I mean, that's kind of, um, so he's more of a king maker, whereas the emperor is also a king maker, but he is the king of all kings. Um, we've got the Taurus, um, bulls here at the top that they've kind of kept in the image and made them more clear. Um, good sturdy structure, um, stuff growing around the throne, but not as much. I like the city in the backdrop. He's got his castle in the backdrop. Um, so they kept... Like, I think they've been very true to the Rider weight deck um, for the most part. Um, he does have pomegranate or grapes on his, um, on his jacket here. Um, we lost the scepter. Um, but yeah, that's cool. King of Pentacles. The king has all they've ever wished for and fought for, and all their material dreams have come to fruition. Though they have so much, they are not miserly, but instead trusting and extremely generous. They love to see others succeed as they have and will definitely be willing to lend a helping hand if needed. If you are the king, don't be stingy with your time and money. Donate your skills, wisdom, and possibly money. You'll feel truly fulfilled after spending the time to help others. Um, <clears throat> this is a duplicate card. Let's find out why. I'm pretty sure it has everything to do. Oh, oh no. Oh, here's why. I'm, you have an option for it to say 10 of swords or everything is fine. And for me, I'm definitely going to keep everything is fine because that's the intention of the deck. And I will put this away into my um, 
everything deck, my, what do they call it? It's not a brick brack deck, it's a magpie deck. And then what do we have here? We have the last card here. It says, you are a badass. Being full of life, love, and possibilities through this deck, may you find a path to your best self. That's pretty cool, too. Pretty cool, too. All right. So the last thing I do when um, I do... An unboxing these days is I do a deck interview. So let's go ahead and get that done. I'll put this away and hang on. All right. Now I normally shuffle like six times, so you can certainly fast forward through this part. I think some people like to hear it, and like I like to show it just to kind of. I do have smaller hands, so. But these are hard for me to shuffle. I mean, it's twice the size of the other deck. And if you've got a cedar and sickle deck, it's about the thickness of that card um, stock. Let's see what else. What other card stock is it similar to? This is a thick deck <laughs> for sure. Um, Trying to see what other decks I have around here. Um, well, the fairy, um, the Fable Makers um, animated tarot is definitely at least this thick. But all those pictures move, so you guys will have to look out for those. I'm not sure I'm going to do it yet because it's it's a much longer book. But there's journal prompts, um, which I always love because. I think that's the best way to learn um, the tarot is, you know, it's really the journey into self. All right. I have no idea how many times I have shuffled these, but because it's a new deck, I want to do a good job. Ooh, it's going to take a minute to get these things flexible for sure. Wow. There we go. Definitely um, <laughs> easier to do this with. It's like it's almost like you got to break this deck for me into thirds. All right, let's see. Okay. So as we interview our deck, <laughs> yes, it's a new beginning. <laughs> We've got our fool here. Um, but what we're doing is not new. Um, what we want to know is what personality does this deck have? And because I didn't have the question formulated, um, I did not use the full card. But yes, it's definitely a new beginning of a, an amazing relationship, hopefully. So what personality does this deck have? It's broken hearted. Okay, what is your strength? Ooh, intuition. And what is your weakness? Conflict. What, how will you help me to grow? Poverty, humble, humility. Uh, when should I call on you for guidance? Uh, it's the Ten of Pentacles. It did come out in the reverse. Um, But I feel like it's like uh, when you need to see your blessings is when you kind of call on this for guidance. What is the best way to work with you? Page of Swords when you're feeling insecure. That's 100% my guides right there, guys. Um, and this is seven. What will our relationship be like? And you can see how well these cards are just 
flying out. So super chatty. Um, I'm just kind of seeing how these laid out. Um, so this laid out first and it covered onto the Ten of Pentacles. So I feel it's like um, when you feel threatened <laughs> is really what I'm getting from here. When your position of strength is threatened, when you feel like your blessings are threatened, this might be a good um, um, a, a good opportunity to kind of um, come and get reflection. Um, then on top of this uh, is the Six of Cups, um, which is kind of like protecting uh, maybe maybe when you are overreactionary, um, that maybe you need to like apologize somewhere. Maybe you want to see. So I do kind of feel like this is one that you definitely come to for relationships. This is a relationship deck, 100%. And not just lovers, but friends and family. And, you know, um, it, this is a really, you know, co-workers. But this very much feels like a relationship um, deck. And it feels like it caters to kind of like that inner child. Um, and maybe healing that inner child so you truly experience all of your, your blessings. You kind of keep your demons at bay. Uh, let's see. And yeah, and you can walk away from the things that don't serve you. Um, like these insecurities over here. <laughs> um, all right, so I do feel like this is a, a relationship deck 100% between including yourself. This, this is no wonder to me that this is the most um, popular bestseller on, um, on Amazon. It is a very easy to read, um, super intuitive deck. Um, if you like it and you like this video, please um, like, subscribe, share, thumbs up, give me a comment below. All of those things help the algorithm find me um, and um, present these cards for you. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Have a beautiful, blessed day.